What's up guys? Welcome back to Angle Grounders and Ideas. Today is day three of the rebuild on the uh, Evo 10. In today's video, I'm gonna completely drill out the old core support from the factory frame rails, get it removed, get it prepped, and then I'm gonna drill out my new core support, get those old frame rails off, get that one prepped, and get it welded in. Check it out. So I want to show you a little bit closer look at actually taking the spot weld off from start to finish. I just got some new bits. I, they, it, they dull out quick. I use the cheaper bits, I'm not gonna lie. Here's some Irwin ones, they're titanium, whatever. You gotta be careful with your speed. Uh, going really fast and pushing really hard is the quickest way to destroy the drill. Not only will it ruin the point on it, but the, the bit will actually like change color. And once you've overheated it, it's, it's pretty much useless. I think I got these for like six bucks. And I went to Ace Hardware, which is like double the cost of uh, getting them online. But I need them today, not next week. Anyway, here's the spot welds. You can see them. I've showed you guys a thousand times at this point. But I'm going to put the drill bit in the center of it the best I can. Just eyeball it. It's not a big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and drill this out. Now I'm pushing down on the drill to hold it center and I'm, you'll see me move a little bit to just center it like you would if you drill anything else. But I'm not pushing so hard that if it was to let go I would fall like through the drill into the core support. Also speed, like I said, it's important. So don't go, don't go so fast that your drill is maxed out because it's just gonna wear the bit out. You can also use cutting oil if you wanna spray some WD-40 or actual drilling oil on this stuff. But I prefer to just buy more bits than I would coat this thing in oil and have to clean it before I do anything else with it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now this one is thicker. This is stronger for the beam that goes across the front to attach to it. It's gotta be like a bit more robust. So this is gonna be thicker, so it does take longer. And sometimes you're going through three pieces of steel. You'll go through the outer layer, this part, and then the underside that's attached to it too. And since I need all that off, I've gotta drill all the way through it. But just to show you how this one works now, we'll jump to our step bit. Now I did buy a middle, a middle size bit just in case I can't step all the way up. Because again, you don't want to wear out the top of this. Because if you wear out this step bit, all these other steps might be usable. You can see I haven't even really gotten down here to use this. But if this is so dull that I can't drill with it, all this is pretty much wasted. I have cut these off before and like tried to you know, keep them alive a little bit longer. But it's easier if you just step slowly. So that's one step, so I went to here, and now I'm gonna go all the way up one more. And you only need to go two for this. And that's it, so that's all you need. So now I'm gonna drill out the other ones, and then I will show you, I'll actually film tapping it off. So when I do that, I will take a hammer and a flathead, and you lay it underneath here. See, the other side's already done. It makes it a little bit more fluid when I try to film and show you guys what I want you to see. Not waste your time and mine. This is all drilled out on this side. That side is, is the end goal. But when you do this, you gotta be careful to not drill out like the wrong stuff. I had to take my time and kinda look at it from multiple angles. And I ended up needing to cut off. If you remember, this was boxed in because this was this part, this whole surrounding piece. This is what that was. But I had to cut the top of it off so that I could drill out these spot welds down here. There were three of them, there's just no way I was getting in there with a drill. It didn't matter, but now the challenge is gonna be on this car, obviously I cannot cut off anything to access the spot welds to drill them out. It has to stay together, that's the whole reason I'm doing this. So it'll be a little bit of a challenge, but I wanted to show exactly how this comes apart. So this is the side, this is, this is done, and this is what I need it to look like on the other side. Every single one of these spot weld holes, I'm gonna go around the surface with an angle grinder with a flap disc on it, I'm just gonna clean them all up so it can be welded. When it's installed, I wanna be able to tack it on the outside. Now I might tack it in the middle right here too, but I need to tack it where it's the most flat and the sides that aren't flat. And this, this is caused by me, even me hitting it with a hammer or me being uh, a little bit rough when I pulled it off. I want it to sit as flat as possible to what it's getting welded to, so that's a really good, nice fit. I'm just gonna prep this all the way down all of this, pretty much everything that had a spot weld is gonna be nice and shiny. There'll be no paint or primer on it and it will be ready to be welded. And then I will decide later where I weld, but I wanna get it all prepped ahead of time so it's ready to go and I don't have to put it on, mark it, take it off, prep it, blah, 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 blah. So in order to get this side to look the same, I wanna show you exactly what is required. You can see I've got all the spot welds drilled out and it's ready to come apart, but it doesn't just fall apart, it's still, connected because a little bit of the welds are still existing. Like around this edge, I didn't drill it out entirely. So there's still gonna be a little bit of material that's connected there. But I'm gonna put the camera in the tripod and I'll give it a couple good smacks with a hammer on any spot that doesn't have to be saved. So I can hit it right here, I can hit it on top. I can hit this edge as long as I don't hit this. And then I can hit this flat surface here as long as I don't go into this. If you look right here, just a couple hits, 
and you can see how this is separated already. The looser it gets, the more it starts to pull itself away from this piece, the easier all of this will be, but I still might have to drill some of it out, and I still might have to use my flathead. There are other ways to do this, but this has always worked really well for me, as long as I flatten out the edges afterwards. What happens is when you put the flathead in and you hit it, the round portion of the flathead will drive down into it, and it will actually put like a rounded uh, curvature, like a half moon curvature in the sheet metal. Again, I don't care if that happens to this piece, but I can't control it. Once it's in there, it might indent this piece a bit, and then I've gotta hit that edge flat again. And if it's boxed in like this, I can't fix it as easily. I don't have a way to go to the backside and tap it flat again with the hammer. So I'm gonna try to hit it as hard as I can on these pieces first, and get as much done without damaging what I need, and then I'll get the flat head out and chip away the rest of the spot weld that's left. Sometimes you can take your flathead and just kind of like wiggle it in there and see if you're even close to getting it to come off. That one's not there yet. There we go. Look at that, the whole thing just comes right off. I didn't even have to screw with most of it like I thought I would. A lot of that's because I went with the size that I did. If you go smaller, you're gonna have more of that weld that had like area to travel around, and it's gonna get stuck. And now that that's done, we just gotta get rid of this outside piece right here, and you can see it's kinda coming off too. So a couple smacks with the hammer, and I may not have to do much with the flathead. Or anything with that flathead. And this is the, uh, this is the frame rail. It's pretty straight, it's a little off. It won't matter once it's installed. So there we go, our uh, OEM replacement lower core support is all ready to be prepped. So it was really easy in comparison to prep this one and get rid of all the old sheet metal that we didn't need. But now we gotta do it on the car and it's a bit more difficult. And like I said before, I don't wanna pull the motor just to prep this thing. So this side won't be too bad. This side might be a little bit more difficult with the alternator right there. I'm hoping I can do it. I'm hoping I don't have to pull the headlights off. I'm being lazy, trying to save time. This is fun, but at the end of the day, I want to get this thing fixed and ready to sell as fast as possible. It doesn't matter how much money you make if it takes you 10 years to do it. Now, when you're prepping the material, you don't need to push into it hard. All I want to do is remove the paint on any part of the surface that's going to get welded. So I'm going to do the back side and the front side because when you weld it, the weld will bleed through and I don't want all this to like start burning up. It'll give me a bad weld. I'll have uh, contaminants in the weld and it, it's going to just look shitty. So prep all that on both sides, and like I said, don't grind into it. You don't want to cut through this, especially. It's like, it's like 18 or 20 gauge. You don't want to go through it, you just want to get the paint off, and you want to also clean up the edges from where it was drilled out. Hey, it's been about a week for years now, nobody play us. It's been a chess game with no clock, nobody said rush I take my time, I manifest, I wear a vest and hit what? I speak a tongue, soon to rise, you ain't heard this shit before Yeah, and seen it's changed a bit Here come the greatest hits, here come the motion picks There go that movie, ho I'm So one side's fully prepped You can see what I was talking about, it's just nice and shiny, it's just ready to be welded Nothing nuts, alright here I almost went through and I wasn't even pushing on it, it's just so thin so you just gotta be cautious. If there is some paint you can't get to, like I can't get all the way against this edge with that disc, I'm not gonna sit here and like hand sand it. I'm just gonna weld it, you can get through it. But you know, make up for the shitty welds with, with good quality welds everywhere that you can. And it's not bad, it's not, I'll show you in video, it's not gonna actually look like a bad weld. But just do your best in the spots that you're able to get to. That way if you have any spots that are less than ideal, you don't compromise any integrity because you like, half-assed the other side that you were able to actually get to. I'm not gonna film the second side, you know what it looks like, but I'm gonna prep all of this, and then I'm gonna get this thing out of the way, and we can get onto the car. And all right, one side down. I was able to get it off pretty clean. You can see it's a little tweak from me using a flathead to get in there, but I didn't have to take any headlight off. I didn't have to take the alternator off. I did have to move the oil cooler down, just on the bracket, I just set it down there on the side. You can see it came out in like two pieces but it's awesome, I'm happy I was able to get it out and now you can see like where this will kind of fit up with that. I actually set this here so I could look at it because I um, I drilled out a couple, I almost drilled out a couple spot welds that I didn't need to drill out. Thankfully I stopped before the hole even went all the way through. Not a big deal, but saves you time if you just know what you're doing. So I looked at this for reference. This side's gonna be the same deal. Drill out some spot welds. Then I'll prep both sides of the flap disc and we'll get it tacked into place. Once I tack it, I gotta check fitment with this bracket right here. I gotta make sure that there's no pressure on that. Right now the car's on jack stands. I had to raise it so I could sit underneath it and drill out the spot welds on the side like this. And I'll have to pull that ground wire off 
drill those out. And you can see where this is actually bent in a little bit. So when I drill it out, I'll probably end up hitting it to get it straight so I can drill it straight. And um, it actually, this side looked the exact same way, but now you can see it's pretty straight. So once this goes back on, everything will be good. All right, I got the second side done. Driver's side's ready, passenger side's ready. I tried to line up the core support and it's a little bit difficult to get up in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep this first. That way if I do get it to pop into place, I can just go ahead and weld it while it's there. I think a lot of the problem is that this lower piece is, you know, it bolts up from the bottom side to the bottom of the core support. And it's kind of in the way. And I think I'm gonna have to put a little bit of inward pressure on these to get them to kind of bow in so they'll pop in. If that doesn't work, I will drill out the spot welds and take one of them off and then weld it back once I get it into place. Because I think I might get it popped in and get it stuck in there once it's in, I'm gonna go ahead and prep it now. That way if I test fit it and it stays in place, I can just leave it there. All of that, and it still ain't worth it, yeah Got so much gratitude, it still ain't worth it, yeah They calm this low because I live so high How can you feel this good and almost not be alive, damn So I started to slide the course board into place And maybe you can see what I was talking about, about it getting wedged in there It's just floating right now by itself I did hammer out the bottom side that were dead straight They're kind of like tapped out a little bit same with this side, just to give me a little bit of room so when it pops up, I can hit them from the outside and drop them in. But I actually had to pull on this thing like really hard and then push it up with my foot to get it in there. Now my issue is that this lower transmission mount needs to be on the other side. What I'm gonna have to do is pull off these bolts here, and there's two underneath, I think, and drop the mount down, then I can slide this up into place, and then I can reinstall this. I say to all of you and hope I'm never a hypocrite, yeah. Let's make it through this where it only gets better, yeah. Straight from my soul, I hope you felt every letter. Okay. So I got the new core support mostly in position. I got the center bar, uh, what do you want to call that? Transmission mount, bracket, I'm sure there's a name for it, like a mustache bar or something stupid. Now I'm just going to get this, I'm going to press this in, you can see the holes line up, and I'll get it welded. Okay. So I got everything welded up and then I went ahead and uh, grinded it down a little bit so it doesn't stand out so much. So it kind of looks like factory tack or spot welds. And you can tell if you know what you're looking for. I'm pretty happy with it. It's just primered. I just shot primer over the top to keep it from rusting. It'll get some more paint later. I might grind it down a little bit more and then it'll probably get shot silver so it doesn't stand out so much. So I got the car on the ground. I went ahead and put the upper core support, just the crossbar on for now, just to hold everything straight. Uh, I don't know. It's, I'm gonna move the car. I gotta push it around, get it on the lift, and I just wanna keep everything in its position. One thing I think I need is the, I think the lower bar and the top bar are maybe connected. I think maybe something goes from here down or uh, something like that, I don't really know. But I got the car like this and I don't have another Evo 10 to look at right this moment. But I'll look online and I'll see what I can find. I'm sure there's plenty of pictures of intercooler installs and stuff like that. And I can see if I need a bar that goes from the bottom to the top. I wish I would've known I would've pulled it from the junkyard car. I don't really feel like driving back, but if I have to, I will. But I'm gonna go ahead and call it a wrap at this point. I'm pretty exhausted. But well, thanks again for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. And if you got any questions or concerns, please leave in the comment section below. I hope I'm getting better at this. I'm trying my best. Peace out.